Hey everybody, some of you have seen yesterday 4 hours investor day and I believe a lot of people are confused about what you have seen and I'm not going to recap everything here so no worries but I'm going to show you or explain to you why I believe this was a game changing presentation yesterday in terms of the content. Yes, I understand some people are disappointed about the way Tesla is presenting, but let's be honest, we've seen this now for many, many years, so nothing has really changed. And other people are, you know, disappointed about the content, and I believe this probably has to do with they don't understand all the technical details and they've been just looking for some digestible, you know, quick information in terms of how Tesla is going to grow. And this is a more profound detailed explanation which is exactly what I've been looking for so I'm totally you know thrilled I'm blown away by that by all the details and I'm not going to do a long video here because I would, would like to you know explain the most important part and the most important part is definitely the next gen you know the next generation vehicle platform Tesla presented yesterday and this has a lot of elements but let's discuss the most important one which has to do with how Ford started a production exactly 100 years ago. So in 1922 um, Ford, Henry Ford invented kind of the production line where and you see it on these pictures where you know a company is starting to producing a vehicle by putting the first element almost on a conveyor belt and people from the right and left working on you know the axis and the wheels and then they continue to build up the car on that belt and it's moving slowly in a certain speed so you start with zero and you end up with a finished vehicle that is rolling out of a out of the factory and this was a method from Henry Ford in order to introduce mass production and make you know products and vehicles um, cheap so affordable which which was a game changer because all of a sudden everybody who before had just a, a horse or a few horses and a carriage all of a sudden could buy or could afford buying a, a car a gasoline car and you know they could transport everything they've been independent they could drive longer distances so this was a big big change in terms of productivity at that time in the 20th in the US in terms of you know GDP and productivity and growth so it was it had a big huge uh, you know positive impact uh, on the economy in the US at that time and later on on the entire world so big thing big story so and in the last hundred years to be honest in the automotive production also other production lines not a lot changed so it's still the same concept and it's still going like that and even Tesla is still doing it like that but yesterday they presented how they want to change this in a dramatic way and that dramatic way will lead to a cost reduction by 50 percent and we all know that Tesla is already in terms of cost the leader in the industry uh, just last week Toyota executive said the Model Y you know is a piece of art when they looked under the hood which I'm not surprised about but I'm surprised that Toyota is realizing that so late however they've said that and they had a good reason to say it because Toyota is recognized as one of the companies in terms of mass production who really you know has mastered this uh, the thing to produce vehicles with very low cost which is why the Motorola Co the Toyota Corolla is with I think it's 55 million vehicles that they sold in total uh, the vehicle the best sold, selling vehicle ever so and I predict and here's my prediction that Tesla is overtaking them and they will overtake them by manufacturing electric vehicles that in the future are going to be 50 percent cheaper than that what we've seen today so this is massive 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 so how are they going to do that one of the key parts is that Tesla is now changing the way they produce vehicles simply because they think more in systems so before you had the situation that you manufactured the vehicle piece by piece and then you had to you know deassemble it partly in order to go through the paint shop and later on in terms of manufacturing you added a lot of pieces piece by piece until the vehicle was finished 
what they are now doing, uh, and they started already with the, um, you know, with the integrated battery pack where the seats are just, you know, fixed on top of the, directly on top of the battery pack, which brought to them the idea that, you know, why don't we do the entire thing in terms of modules? So we are not going the traditional path in terms of, um, you know, optimizing the way how we add parts to the vehicle. We, we, we start to build systems and the last step of the, of the production, more or less general assembly, will be to add this large uh, modules, which are, you know, the front or the rear part of the vehicle together and then the car is finished. So that's a different approach. And why is that? I mean, this has risks. This is not easy to do, first of all. But secondly, it has a huge advantage. And that advantage only has been men mentioned, um, you know, gradually. And I, I believe most people didn't catch that. So the big advantage is in a traditional production line, you have a lot of interruptions. So the line stops because a part is missing or parts are missing, systems are missing that they integrate. And because of that, they just have to stop everything. So the entire line is stopped, which is which is bad because right now at Tesla, it's every vehicle is rolling out of the factory in 45 seconds. But sometimes you have to wait. I mean, as we, we all know that chip shortages and other issues happened uh, over time, um, you know, harnesses didn't didn't come through the supply chain and a lot of these parts are coming just in time. So they are coming in the factory just right to the line. But if they are not coming for whatever reason, then the line stands, which is a big issue because the costs are piling up dramatically. All people at that line, all machines cost money. They are standing around, they are not moving. Everybody is waiting for this, you know, damn one part to continue production. And this is just not sustainable. So if you kind of decentralize that, so you have larger parts of the vehicle produced, the front, the rear, the side parts, completely finished in a way that at the end you only stick this together to have the final car, you are not depending anymore on that one part coming just in time to your line because you can continue the production on the other parts you, you finished entire parts of the vehicle already, despite parts are missing. So yes, you have to buffer them. You have to produce them. You are producing, continue producing them up front, and you just still don't have cars rolling out of the factory. But you have the entire section finished, and you continue to do that. And while the missing part is coming in, you can add of that together. So what I'm trying to say here is the added value that you're creating and the you know efficiency in terms of invested um, human resources and um, you know production capacity all of that is continuously used despite a part is missing and this is massive i mean i just can't express how a revolution is this going to be for the automotive industry it's a revolution really comparable to that what we've seen from Henry Ford in the year 2022. And this is just the next gen way how they you know, assemble and produce in the factory. And there are a lot of more cost advantages Tesla presented yesterday. But I think I, I wanted to share this with you because it's, it's really exciting and it makes a huge big difference. And I totally understand that a lot of people just don't get it. I mean, this is very technical. I'm a production engineer by education and you can read from my eyes that I'm totally excited about what I've seen last night. And the reason simply is because I believe I understand what this means. This means that the entire industry is going to change simply because cost reduction will be dramatic based on that new approach if they manage it, and I, I think they will. And the entire legacy automakers are going to be extremely under pressure simply because, think about it, um, right now, I don't know what a, you know, the, the, the low cost Tesla vehicle is probably 37K or something like that in the US. In the future, it's gonna be 50% lower in terms of costs. So we do not know exactly what the costs are in terms of production right now, but just for the, for the sake of the argument, 
if you cut 50% off of the, of the selling price, you, you easily end up with, with a 20K vehicle, which is, which is a game changer. Because Elon said yesterday they've been positively surprised about realizing how much the demand goes up if they just change or reduce the price a little. And, and, and now they've been opening the door to a 50% cost reduction in terms of production which gives them you know, a, a huge opportunity in terms of reducing the, the price of vehicles in the future and the demand will go through the roof. So everybody who doesn't understand that this will lead to easily 20 million vehicles produced a year doesn't understand how the industry works. And, 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 the, and the main point is, no, the competition is not coming because they are unable to do that. And they are unable to do that because they have a structure in terms of their supplier base that doesn't allow it. You, you just, you know, have to have, or you must have not that many suppliers if you want to include such a structure in your production line. Right now, Tesla presented yesterday about 8,000 uh, tier one suppliers. And, and just for, for, the, for the sake of the argument, the VW group has 40,000. So that is a huge group and all of the suppliers are trying to create high revenue and high profit by selling parts and systems to the manufacturers and they are not interested in cost reduction really just on their side but not in terms of price reduction when they sell it because they want to make high profit. You know, th these companies need to make money. They have shareholders who are looking for a dividend and they have managers who are looking for their bonuses. So there is an interest, a conflict of interest between the manufacturers and the suppliers. So if you have fewer suppliers, it's much easier to manage this. And suppliers, by the way, cost a lot in terms of managing them. And this was touched on yesterday as well in terms of people are going to suppliers and, you know, they're sitting there, they're making sure parts are, you know, produced in the right way, that the quality is okay, before they are shipped finally to Tesla, which is, by the way, something the entire auto industry is doing. But it's creating a high cost because you have to pay, you know, labor, people who are sitting at your suppliers and doing kind of the jobs the suppliers should do. So therefore, this is a complexity on top of that. So what I'm trying to say there is, this is groundbreaking. Don't be surprised if in the years to come, Tesla is going to grow very fast, continue to grow very fast, making an incredible margin in the future because simply they have the flexibility in terms of cost reduction and, and the price management. Also because they don't have dealerships, they are selling online, which is another challenge the legal, legal, uh, legacy automakers have. So therefore, I, I see really a bright sky, bright future for Tesla here. And I understand some people don't get it, but in terms of production technology and cost reduction, what we've seen yesterday is going to be a game changer helping Tesla to achieve the 20 million vehicles they want to produce per year starting in 2030. So I'm more convinced than ever. I'm very excited. And this was an awesome day yesterday for me as an investor. And I believe, um, you know, we, we will be surprised what we are going to see in the future. Have a great day. See you soon.